Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys in the comments about keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So thanks and keep those questions coming. And while I try to answer them with written responses in the comments, often I can't really get into too much detail. So today I'm gonna to go into more detail on some of the questions that I think are relevant to a lot of the viewers of this channel. And so the first question I have is, what is the difference between an azanthic and an anerythristic boa? Well, this is actually an anerythristic boa. You can see this animal has almost a black and white appearance. This is a Peregrinera Peninsula boa from Venezuela, but this is the anerythristic variant. And so you can see it's kind of got a beautiful, uh, almost black and white look, almost like a black and white photograph. And anerythristics and azanthic boas generally look pretty similar. So the term uh, anerythristic means lacking the red pigments. The erythrins are the red pigments. The term azanthic specifically means lacking the yellow pigments. And so a boa like this is said to be anerythristic, but technically it's also uh, azanthic because it's lacking the yellow pigments as well. The pigment layers in boas and other snakes, the reds and yellows, are generally laid down as one layer. Interestingly, when you look at ball pythons, a ball python of similar appearance of, to this anerythristic boa are typically uh, thought of as azanthic, so they're mi missing the yellow pigments, but they're missing the red pigments as well. So technically we could say that anerythristic boas are also azanthic, and azanthic ball pythons are also anerythristic. Honestly, I don't know, uh, I'm not quite sure why they call a, a ball python azanthic and the boa anerythristic, but in general these animals are lacking the red and the yellow pigments. So our next question, what do the numbers and lists of boas mean? I've seen numbers like 1.2, 0.3, 0 .0 0.0.4. What do these numbers mean? Well, this is a shorthand for uh, noting the sexes of the boas and how many of each sex is are available. So you might see a list of snakes and it says Colombian boas 1.3. And so what the number to the left of the decimal or the period is the number of males. The number to the right of the period is the number of females. So 1.3 means that there's one male and three females available. And in the same way, 2.4 would be two males and four females. 0 0.5 would be zero males and five females, etc. It's just a shorthand of notating the um, number of animals of each sex that are available. You may also see a third number like 0.0.4. So what that third number means, this is the number of unsexed, unsexed animals available. So in that case, there are four of these animals available and they're not sexed. Next question, what is your opinion of a naturalistic vivarium with living plants in bioactive soils? Well, I've never actually had a vivarium like this. They can be very beautiful to look at and it's always really amazing to see a boa in a simulation of its natural habitat like in the Amazon rainforest. So if you're interested in doing this, I would say by all means set up a really nice vivarium for your boa to live in. It's always going to be something you can really enjoy looking at and I always enjoy looking at these types of enclosures at zoos. So that being said, there is a considerable amount of higher uh, maintenance time that you would need to put into a cage like this in terms of caring for the plants and having all of the right light for the plants, etc. And in addition, I don't think the boas really get a benefit out of it. We, we like to think about boas you know, needing to live in their natural habitat. And an animal in captivity is somehow yearning for its natural habitat. But the truth is boas have no concept of their natural habitat. These animals are born in captivity. They don't know that their ancestors came from the Amazon rainforest and they somehow want to live in the Amazon. Provided you provide them with all of the husbandry requirements that would be possible in the Amazon in terms of the uh, humidity, the temperature range, the number of hiding places, etc. A boa is going to be perfectly happy and healthy. And in fact, many snake hunters in the field will look at for snakes in garbage dumps because there's a lot of habitat created by 
human garbage like boards and you know corrugated uh, aluminum roofing that the snakes will hide under. The next question is about a book that I highly recommend for boa constrictor keepers. That is The Complete Boa Constrictor by Vin Russo. And the question is that someone is interested in buying this book and they went and they saw that the first edition is selling for a lot more money than the new updated edition. Does this mean there's information in the first edition that's not available in the new edition and should they pay that extra money for the original first edition? And so with this book, there was a rather uh, unusual situation a few years ago because the first edition, which was first published in 2007, went out of print and the book wasn't available. And as a result, the prices skyrocketed on the uh, secondhand book market. So this book originally sold for somewhere between 50 and $60. But because it was out of print and not widely available, the prices, the asking prices went up to over $400. I'm not sure how many of them actually sold for these prices. Luckily, Vin came out with an updated edition last year. And this edition is more up to date. It's got more current information. So if you're getting into boa constrictors, you should definitely get the updated new edition. And I believe it's around the same price, like 50 to $60. There's not any information contained in the first edition that's not contained in the second edition. And the second edition is more up to date with more current information. So definitely get that uh, second edition. If you're really into collecting books, you might want to shell out the extra money for the first edition, and I have the first edition right here. The next question is about boas from Colombia, and the question is, are Colombian boas boa constrictor constrictor or boa imperator slash boa constrictor imperator? Well, the answer is both forms of boa constrictor live in Colombia. In general, the boa imperator or the boa constrictor imperator, the common boa, lives west of the Andes, more in the northwestern part of the country. The boa constrictor constrictor true red tail boa from Colombia lives east of the Andes in the uh, Amazon rainforest, typically in the southeastern part of Colombia. And so this is a uh, Barranquilla Colombia boa. This is technically a boa imperator. Uh, this particular animal is from ancestors derived from Barranquilla, which is in the uh, northern coast of Colombia. And um, what's interesting is although technically this animal is boa imperator, I believe that the looks and a lot of the characteristics of this animal are more similar to the true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor, to some other types of boa imperator, such as some of the Central American and some of the island boas, the dwarf island boas, like that qual key uh, boa from Belize. Um, this based on the overall look and the pattern and the behavior. And I think people have a tendency to believe that these boa subspecies and species are really well defined in nature. And the truth is they're not. Classification is somewhat arbitrary and scientists have to place boas into discrete species and subspecies. But in nature, it's often not so clear cut. And animals like this Branchia columbia boa will often have traits of both the boa constrictor constrictor as well as the boa imperator. And a lot of people get caught up on this whole red tail versus the non-red tail boa. You can see although, although this animal is technically not a red tail as far as being a boa constrictor constrictor, the uh, colors of the tail definitely do have a reddish tinge to them. And I would say that the, the tail of this animal is almost as red as some of the true red tail boa. So don't get caught up on this uh, inferiority complex if you don't have a true red tail boa. The non red tail boas like this branchia boa are every bit as beautiful and as desirable for a locality boa collector. One question I get asked a lot is about feeding boas. And some people feel that it's a good idea to remove a boa from its primary enclosure and put it in a secondary enclosure like a large tub when you feed it. And the idea is that the boa will not associate its primary enclosure with feeding uh, and then you're less likely to be bitten due to a feeding bite. And this logic is really flawed for a couple of reasons and I don't recommend removing your boa to a secondary feeding enclosure. So when you're going to get the boa out of the primary enclosure to move to the secondary feeding enclosure, 
you already have the rodent ready and the smell of the rodent is already in the air and the boa is going to pick up on this and be ready to go and I, there's a good chance that your hand might get bitten as a consequence. So once you have it in that secondary enclosure, after you're done feeding, you're going to have to pick the boa up and carry it back to the primary enclosure. And the boa, after having fed, it's going to be kind of hyped up and might be expecting more food. So you might get bitten taking the boa back to the uh, primary enclosure. And then in addition, you need to move the boa after it's fed. And you really don't want to be lifting up your boa for a couple days after feeding to prevent it from accidentally regurgitating. So I would say it's always a good idea to feed in your primary enclosure. I've always done this and I haven't had any issues with an increase in feeding related aggression. And if you do have an animal that's food aggressive, it's a good idea to announce your uh, intent to pick the animal up in a non-feeding session just by using a snake stick and kind of gently tapping on the tail before picking the animal up. So the next question, what is your opinion of Dumeril's boas? So I've never kept a Dumeril's boa. I have uh, uh, admired them for a long time though. You know, several times I've been pretty close to picking some up. You know, they're a beautiful looking uh, form of boa from Madagascar, which is pretty unusual for a boa to be you know, all the way in Madagascar, but they are re true boas. They're not boa constrictors, but they're pretty similar to boa constrictors in terms of their size and overall looks, and in terms of their overall husbandry. And they've really enjoyed a uh, increase in popularity over the last couple of years. For a while, they were available relatively inexpensively, but the prices have certainly shot up in the last year or two. In fact, I remember about maybe 12 or 13 years ago, seeing some nice Dumeril's boas at a local pet shop. I actually almost pulled the plug and picked some up. And at the time, they were only $100 a piece. Uh, I didn't do that, you know, I, it would have been great to have them, but you know, I'm happy with the boas that I have. So I don't really have any plans at this time to expand to Dumeril's boas, but if you're interested in them, by all means, check them out, pick up a pair, see how you like them. Uh, I think, you know, overall, they're a great species to work with from, you know, what I can tell about them. The next question, what is the proper pronunciation of Imperator as in Boa Imperator? Well, this is how I pronounce it, Imperator. I don't necessarily think that this is the only way to pronounce it. I've heard other people say Imperator or Imperator or, you know, things like that. And this is really a potato versus potato type of argument. Say it the way that you're comfortable with, depending on your own, you know, regional accent. And I'm pretty sure that most people will have a pretty good idea what you're talking about. So the next question is about morph boas, and someone writes that they're interested in morph boas, but they want a morph that doesn't lose its color with age, like the call albinos and some other morphs. What is a good morph that doesn't lose its color with age? And my number one pick would be, in this category, would be the VPI T-positive albino like this one. Uh, so this male is about four years old now, and he's just getting better and better. He's got this beautiful, lemony yellow color with all these pink and you know rose highlights on his uh, sides i've seen pictures of adults they just this is a particular type of albino that just looks better with age so vpit positive is one of my favorite morphs and i would definitely recommend it for someone that wants a boa that's going to retain its color with age and i also like about it is it doesn't scream that it's a morph or a genetic freak it just looks like a nice brightly colored boa. A couple other morphs that I'm working with that I got into because they really look good as adults are the Moran, which is a, an incomplete uh, form of pastel, or incomplete dominant form of pastel, I should say, as well as the jungle boa, which the jungles really retain their color well, and that jungle gene really enhances the overall color appearance. And our last question for today, someone writes that they really like my locality boa content, but in their opinion, I've shown too many morph boa videos lately, and they're hoping I'll show more locality boa, specifically uh, BCC videos in the near future. 
Well, with boas, there's a lot of different topics. There's a lot of different types of boas, a lot of really cool things to discuss. I did show a couple different morph videos lately. I know that my viewership is probably about 75% in favor of the locality boas. And as you probably know, my collection, the vast majority of animals I have are locality boas. So in general, my content will be heavily favored on locality boas. I do want to talk about morph boas though, since I have a nice smaller group of some selective morph boas. So I'm, I will plan on releasing morph boas from time to time as the topics present themselves. But of course, I will be releasing a lot of locality boas. Uh, I probably will be doing some true red tail boa videos in the next few weeks. You know, got a lot of topics about true red tails. I know the true red tails are a very popular type of animal among the locality collectors. And my locality collection is probably about one third true red tail. So I really am happy with the animals I have. Um, I got a lot of great pairings this year in the true red tail space. And hopefully I should be producing some really world-class animals that of localities that are often very hard to get. So please stay tuned for the next few months and we should have some great videos on locality boas and true red tails in particular. So that was the answers to some of your questions. I hope these explanations were helpful to you. As always, I appreciate the questions and keep them coming and we'll do some more videos like this at some point in the future. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boss.